Hi, and welcome back to A Guide to Surviving a Stroke and Brain Injury. This is the third video I'm doing on the nine types of strokes you can have in your brain. So today we're going to discuss the frontal lobe stroke. Almost one-third, that's a lot, one-third of the cerebrum is comprised of the frontal lobe, which is here. Uh, it should be no surprise that the frontal lobe path plays a role in many functions. Motor skills, executive functioning, speech, language, and social skills. Effects of the frontal lobe stroke include motor impairments, problem solving and judgment issues, behavioral changes, and difficulty with speech, aphasia, dysarthia, or apraxia of speech, among others. So, I'm going to try to show you. So that is the frontal lobe where you have the stroke. That's a pretty big area considering where I had my strokes. So, the frontal lobe is comprised of two paired lobes known as the left and right frontal cortex. Uh, together, these lobes comprise, comprise almost two-thirds of the brain and help control many functions. You, here are the functions that the frontal lobe is known to control. Speech and language. The left half of the frontal lobe helps with thought into verbal language. Other parts of the frontal lobe also help with language skills. That is very scary. Um, motor skills. The frontal lobe is home to the primary motor cortex, sorry, a region that controls muscle movement. It shows it's what allows you to walk, run, and perform any other physical movement you can think of. That sounds like a very scary stroke to me. Uh, executive functioning. The frontal lobe plays a critical role in a person's ability to plan, make decisions, manage their needs, and juggle multiple tax tasks at once. It also plays a big role in attention and concentration. Empathy and social skills. The frontal lobe helps to empathize and understand the feelings of others. A frontal lobe stroke can affect any of these abilities. It can be helpful to ask the neurologist about which hemisphere of the brain was affected by the frontal lobe stroke, as that can have implications for recovery. The causes of the frontal lobe stroke. There are two types of stroke that can affect the frontal lobe and all the areas of the brain. I have my notes again, sorry. <laughs> so, first, an ischemic, ischemic stroke occurs when a blood clot becomes clogged in an artery in the brain, developing this part of the brain of, of depriving this part of the brain of oxygen. Second, in most rare cases, a hemorrhagic stroke occurs when an artery in the brain bursts, causing a bleeding in the brain. Furthermore, the frontal lobe is divided into two hemispheres, where each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body. As a result, motor impairments usually occur on the side of the body opposite of the stroke. In other words, a right frontal lobe stroke may impair movement on the left side of the body, and a left frontal lobe stroke may appear the right side. Motor impairments aren't the only side effect of a frontal lobe stroke, though. The frontal lobe controls a wide variety of functions. When it becomes damaged by the impact of a stroke, any of these functions can be disrupted. Here are some of the most common symptoms of a frontal lobe stroke. Speech difficulties. This is particularly common after left front lobe strokes as the left hemisphere is usually the language center of the brain. 
Every brain is wired a bit differently, though, and no brain function is controlled solely in one hemisphere alone, thank God. Uh, hem hemiparesis and or hem hemiplegia. Sorry if I'm butchering these. <laughs> this involves weakness or paralysis on one side of the body, usually the opposite side of the stroke. The frontal lobe controls voluntary movement. Therefore, motor issues after a frontal lobe stroke are common. Dysphagia, which I had. Issues with swallowing is a condition known as dysphagia. It can occur after a frontal lobe stroke. With severe strokes, some patients may require a feeding tube. I fortunately did not, but my friend Dave did. Ataxia. Difficulty with coordinated movement, a condition known as ataxia, can occur when the frontal lobe's control of voluntary movement is compromised. Ataxia can affect movement of the limbs, eye movements, and even speech and swallowing. Incontinence. When the frontal lobe patient loses the ability to control their bladder or bowels, which are controlled by muscles, they may suffer from incontinence. Impaired spatial reasoning. So because the frontal lobe controls our spatial awareness, a frontal lobe stroke may affect a patient's ability to pinpoint the location of things they see, feel, or hear, and may cause difficulties with navigating the environment. Vascular dementia. This refers to a loss of several important cognitive skills, including impulsive control, memory, and attention. It can also be associated with strange behaviors. Vascular dementia is sometimes caused by a stroke, but can develop from others uh, causes as well. Behavior changes. Not all side effects are as extreme as dementia. Some frontal lobe patients experience smaller shifts in behavior, like irritability or impulsiveness. <coughs> Excuse me. Personality changes. When a stroke affects a person's thoughts, actions, and beliefs, it can result in personality changes. Cognitive deficits. The frontal lobe plays a strong role in executing functioning. A stroke in this area of the brain may impair a patient's ability to think critically, make decisions, and manage their needs. As you can see, there are many possible side effects of a frontal lobe stroke. Because the frontal lobe controls many different functions, Every stroke is different, and every brain is wired a bit differently. Therefore, every frontal lobe stroke patient will sustain different side effects. It's important for you guys to know that. The good news is that the brain can heal itself. And some, if not all, side effects can be minimized with intensive therapies and hard work. While the effects of the frontal lobe stroke can be damaging, they are not necessarily permanent. In fact, the brain can reassign functions to healthy portions of the brain to help pick up the slack. Thank God. Our brain is a miracle. This process is known as neuroplasticity, and it allows patients to recover, at least partially, from the side effects of stroke. Through mass repetition, you can activate neuroplasticity and retrain your brain to recover abilities lost after a stroke. To understand how it works, think of it as paving new roads. The more you practice something, the stronger those roads become. Repetition is how all skills are originally learned, and it's how skills are relearned during re rehabilitation. Repetition stimulates the brain and encourages new neural tracks to be formed. The, the more you practice the skill, the stronger these neural pathways become and the more your function improves. Therefore, even if you suffer damage to the frontal lobe, 
you may still be able to regain function through her rehab. So it's just like if you learn to play tennis. You suck at first, but eventually you can hit back a ball or two. And after a while, you can play really good tennis. You might not be a pro, but you can play. The same difference. That's what practice does. Practice makes perfect. Have you you've heard that expression? The same thing here. So here are a few types of therapies that can promote a successful recovery from frontal lobe stroke. Speech therapy. If your frontal lobe stroke caused aphasia, difficulty speaking and or understanding language, or dysphagia, swallowing difficulties, begin speech therapy exercises right away. A speech therapist can teach you how to retrain your brain and regain language skills and can help your swallowing improve as well. And it did me. Physical therapy. To recover muscle strength and coordination, make sure you participate in physical therapy. Daily stroke exercises are key to recovery. By exercising the affected parts of your body, you will stimulate your brain and rekindle the neural networks that help you move. Occupational therapy. After a stroke, it may be difficult to perform self-care activities, also known as activities of daily living. Working with an occupational therapist will help you regain some of these functional skills so that you can return to being more independent. We all wanted that. I know that was my biggest thing. I wanted to go to the bathroom by myself. That was the biggest goal I had at the beginning was going to the bathroom so my son and my uncle did not have to help me and see what they didn't want to see. <laughs> uh. OTs can also help you with skills needed for doing things around your home, returning to work or school, and potentially driving, which I'm glad to say I am driving now. Cognitive training exercises. This training, which is often guided by a speech therapist, can help improve memory, attention, problem solving, and learning skills. You can do this through sensitive repetition of cognitive exercises for stroke recovery. Cognitive behavior therapy, which I did. CBT helps people develop positive strategies to avoid harmful actions. It can be specifically helpful for stroke victims who struggle with um, impulsivity. And, of course, but not least, positive psychology. Positive psychology can help retrain the brain to experience more positive emotions. So, positive psychology for me is flipping the switch, flipping the script, however you want to say it. Uh, for example, I can't do this. Dang it. Why is this so hard for me to do? I used to do it all the time. Now I can't do it at all. I'm so helpless. Positive psychology? It's okay. Look, I just moved that from here to there by myself. Oh my God, that was so incredible. Good job, Gay. You did it. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Next time you're going to go farther. Or next time you're going to do it better. See the difference? So positive psychology is giving yourself a freaking break because, no offense, but you need one, I need one, and especially from you. <laughs> I think we are the hardest people on ourselves, and the more we positively think about ourselves, the more successful our challenges are going to become. And the obstacles will become smaller because they're not so big once you agree that you can do it. And look, you didn't cross over it, but you came up to it and you went around it. That's awesome. And you need to retrain your brain to be positive. And that's why I always say celebrate every victory. Every victory. And you're so awesome. Please love yourself. Because I love you just the way you are. With behavioral changes and personality changes, I went through it all. And 
recovery as possible. I hope you see me and that gives you hope because I want to be that hope for you that you can be this way someday. And I've been doing this for five and a half years and it's slow. Well, slower than I'd like. <laughs> I want instantaneous recovery, which I'm not going to get. But <laughs> it's possible and you can do it and you're doing it and you're watching this video to do research on how different ways can help aid you in recovery. So celebrate every victory and next time uh, we're going to do the fourth video in my series and I hope you watch. Have a great day and keep on keeping on.